Well, Christmas is a time for uh, merriment and cheer and joy. It's also a time when people act like assholes. And so we'll be going back to the uh, Am I the Asshole forum on Reddit for a little Christmas-themed edition. And we'll start here. It says, my husband's family likes to drink. Every holiday includes multiple bottles of wines, of wine slash cocktails. I hate drinking. I have never drank. My father was an alcoholic. I think it's childish if you can't have fun without drinking. Ironically, it looks like she was drunk while she wrote this because there's no punctuation at all here. This year, I'm hosting Christmas for a change. I decided since it's at my house, no alcohol allowed. We are all getting older and it's time to grow up. How have you gotten to the point of being an adult and you, you've never even heard of a comma? And this is so common these days. Like people that they don't even, they have no idea. Like they never heard of the concept. So they just, they don't even bother. It's, there are no commas here. Very few periods. Anyway, my husband's sister called to ask what she could bring. She saw a recipe for a Christmas martini that she wanted to bring. I told her about my no alcohol rule. She didn't say much, but must have told the rest of the family. Some of them started texting me, asking me if I was serious and saying that it is lame, but I'm not budging. Now it turns out my husband's sister is hosting an al alternate gathering that almost everyone is choosing to go to instead. It's so disrespectful, all because they would have to spend one day sober. My husband told me he talked to his sister and we are invited to her gathering and he said that we should just go and stop causing issues, but I won't, it's so rude. Uh, now husband is mad because I'm making him stay home and spend Christmas with me, but it was my turn to host and I chose to have a no alcohol. They could have dealt with it for one year. Okay, you're the a-hole here without question. First of all, how is drinking childish? You, you can't even legally drink until you're three years into legal adulthood. So I'm not sure how it's childish exactly. Second, you intentionally made your Christmas gathering less fun and then got mad when people chose not to come to it. So you, you can't, it's not the way it works. You can't do that. You can have your lame teetotaler celebration, but you can't force people to attend. I'll have a bland and bland with nothing in it. Alcohol is not necessary to have a good time. It's not necessary, but it is a social lubricant. And uh, it's not necessary, but your prohibition on it is not necessary. This is just a, this is like a power trip, and that's all this is. Why would people want to go to your event if you have unnecessarily made it less fun? That's what, that's what you have to ask yourself. And also, one other point here, because this is important. I think, I think people, th th this idea, just like commas, this has fallen by the wayside. You know, when you have guests over to your house, your own comfort is actually not supposed to be the top priority. Like, yeah, it's your house and you can do what you want, you can set whatever rules you want, but the comfort of your guests is supposed to be the top priority. And if you're bringing them over for a holiday celebration, you, the, the, the most important thing to you in the world should be that they have a good time. You should be more determined to, to see them have a good time than for you to have a good time. There will be no more partying. And it, that's the way it's going to work. That's part of hosting. It's like you're bringing on all of the responsibility, all the chores and everything onto yourself. And you're doing all this so that your family has a good time. It's an act of love. And if you're not, if you're not ready to take that on, then it's probably better for someone else to host the event. All right. So you're the a-hole. Good. That was easy enough. I am a happily child-free adult. Well, you're already the a-hole. I don't even need to read the rest of this. Babies have always made me super uncomfortable. I don't like looking at them. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, this is it. we've already determined. I don't think we need judge, jury, and executioner. We've already decided. We've already decided your sentence. I don't like looking at them, being in their presence, or really hearing about them. I used to have panic attacks if I had to be near a baby or toddler, even for a minute or two. If a baby or toddler touched me, I'd freak out and have to go wash off a few layers of skin. Oh, so you're mentally ill? This is a crazy person. Okay. Uh, still the a-hole, but you know, there, there's no insanity plea to get you out of the a-hole ruling in this segment. I don't know what caused such an intense reaction, but it's always been like this. I've been working on at least being more cordial and tolerant with babies and toddlers to the point that I no longer have panic attacks. So I'm glad you've been working on that. However, they still make me very uncomfortable and I don't want anything to do with them. I have a friend, we'll call her Sally, who knows that uh, I do not like babies and how uncomfortable they make me. Sally had a baby several months back. How could she do that? How could she do that to you, have a baby, when she knows how you feel about them? 
I was polite and congratulated her. Ever since, every so often, she'll randomly message me about her baby. She'll start with, uh, I know you don't like babies, but, and then send pictures of her baby. Tell me about toys or clothes she bought for her baby, etc. I usually reply in brief messages like nice or okay and leave it at that. I don't want to be mean, so I just give the minimal response. I delete photos immediately because I'm not interested. Sally and I are not, nor have we ever been close friends. Recently, Sally posted in a group that uh, chat that we're both in asking for people's addresses if they want to receive a Christmas card from her baby. That's how she worded it. I figured if I didn't fill out the document, that would be an easy, non-confrontational way to ensure that I would not be receiving baby pictures in the mail. Unfortunately, Sally messaged me privately today asking for my address so that she could send a Christmas card so my silent opt-out is no longer an option. Well, I'd be the asshole if I tell her I don't want a Christmas card from her baby and to please stop sending me photos and updates about said baby. I guarantee, by the way, that this that this person has, like, you know, of course, is a, has a cat or a dog that she's obsessed with. Which, and by the way, in both cases, cat and dog, much dirtier than than babies are. Babies aren't dirty at all. In fact, actually, if you if you like are practicing basic hygiene with your children, and much more annoying too are animals than babies. So you're the a hole by a mile. I mean, you you set like a new a hole standard here. You win gold in the a hole Olympics, I think, just because you naturally feel a certain way or have always felt that way, that doesn't make it okay. So we have this idea these days that if you say, well, you know, I've always, this is how I feel about this, I've always felt like this, that all, 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 automatically, all of a sudden, that makes it okay. It doesn't. It is not okay to be repulsed by children. It is not okay to hate them. Okay, it's like actively not okay. It's actually bigoted. That's how we need to start looking at this. People that say, oh, I hate kids, I don't like kids. That's that's a bigoted Response, because think about it. You, this is a, you are confessing to this prejudice and against an entire demographic of human beings, and it wouldn't be acceptable with any other group you could think of, unless you were talking about white men. Then, then in our culture, that's okay. So, white men and just all kids; those are the two groups you're allowed to despise. Except that your your anti-child bigotry is the least justified bigotry on earth, because you're hating the most innocent people on the planet. What has a baby ever done to hurt you? So this is not okay. Um, it's not okay to say to say no in this case. And uh, I like to think that your friend is fully aware of how this makes you feel and is just doing this to torment you, which I think makes me like your friend even more. My mom died when I was seven. My dad married a new woman about a year later. My stepmom, who I'll call Dory, had a daughter much older than me, who I'll call Kylie. My dad's explanation for why things move so quickly is because Dory and Kylie were being evicted shortly after my dad started seeing her and they needed a place to stay. Stay. So I didn't know them very well before they moved in. Oh my gosh, this thing is long. We're going all the way back to birth or to when she was seven and we're going to get this entire story, get all the background details that we don't need. On Christmas when passing out gifts, I only received one from my parents. This was not something that was common in my family as my dad makes a decent amount of money. And so Kylie and I would always get at least a few gifts each. Kylie and her husband received multiple presents. And when I pointed out uh, that out, I was told that it was because they needed them for their new house and marriage. My present from my parents ended up being a hairbrush. Dory then made a big deal about how she had forgotten the stockings and would have to go get those set up and handed out. I assumed this meant that I was getting another gift in the stocking. When I was handed mine, there was a jewelry box in it. I was very excited. When I opened it, it was a golden K necklace. My name does not start with a K. When I pointed this out, Dory said that the necklace was clearly meant for Kylie and put it in the wrong stocking. I agreed that made sense and then asked if Kylie got the one meant for me and Dory said that there was not one for me. <laughs> Tough brick. I asked her if there was anything else she had forgotten and Dory said, if there's nothing in your stocking, you clearly didn't get anything else. At this point, I was frustrated and hurt. I started to cry. My dad ended up yelling at me and saying that I was being ungrateful and causing problems on Christmas because some kids don't get anything at all on Christmas. He was mad because he said that I caused a scene instead of talking to him after the holiday, that I ruined Kylie and her husband's first Christmas together. I ended up leaving and going to stay with my grandma for the rest of the break. However, sometimes Dory will still mention how spoiled I am for ruining the holiday over not getting what I wanted for Christmas, and it really makes me feel bad about myself, so I have to ask, am I the a-hole for how I reacted? Okay. Uh, yes, you are. And so is your, your stepmom and your dad. And, and Kylie is too. We'll just throw her in. I assume she's probably a hill. This is a family. This seems to be a family-wide phenomenon. It sounds like a miserable family. My God, uh, what a nightmare. Now, it's clear that your evil Cinderella stepmother was probably trying to make a point here. 
She was using Christmas as a passive aggressive way to make a point about how much she hates you and prefers the other one. So that does seem pretty clear. But at the same time, you're an adult. And it's just not under any circumstance acceptable to complain about not getting enough gifts or getting the wrong gifts on Christmas. There's nothing that can make that okay. Maybe if you open the box and there was like anthrax in it or a bomb, then it would be okay to complain. But other than that, you take the gift, you give your phony thank you, and and that's it. And then you leave. And the real response here is is just you don't go back to their house for Christmas again because you see how they treat you. That's fine. Your dad said that some kids don't get anything on Christmas, but you're not a kid, right? You're at least in college, so you're an adult. So this is just embarrassing for everyone all around. Everyone is an a-hole. All of you. You disgust me. But Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year. Thank you.